somewhere around these parts. Because it says on the second floor. If I, this is the second floor right now, so it has to be somewhere around here, right? Before I go down the rope ladder. Somewhere in these next few areas should be where it is. I thought I already checked fully in here, though. This is the only thing, though. Is there a locker somewhere around here? There's corpses. There's definitely a lot of corpses. Were you it? Oh, yeah, you were it. Oh, right, yeah. We found it. Seven. Oh. Three. Eight. All numbers have been set. The lock opened. And what do we find inside? We found guard diary. Yeah, if you want like to pick up the guard diary, I guess we'll read it. You got guard's diary. That was all. Maybe the guard's diary has some important clue that we need. Hopefully. Guard's diary. Okay, 1st of June, seven, or 1716. It's been two months since I left uh, Canterbury. Owing to my sleigh, or owing to my stay at St. Clair's, Lord Webster had said that the weather would be warm at this time of the year, but it's still brisk in the fishing villages, uh, villages lining the coast. After days of being knocked about in the car carriage, I have finally awoke. I can't read this at the moment. Finally arrived at Nemeton Prison, an evil-looking place, luring down on a barren plain form or from atop a cliff battered by the chill sea breeze. Lord Webster told me to keep the strictest confidence. I cannot say what lies within this old, lonely building, only that while I am yet young, I have been on a, I have been a guard many years, but I have never seen nor heard of a goal, gal built in a place such as this. While Lord Webster didn't tell me much about the prison's history, it is easy to imagine the part this, uh, the part this foreboding place played in quieting conspiracies and political struggles. Uh, though I do not look forward to spending my days here, I have no choice. My family depends on it. June 2nd, 1716. Nemeton Prison. A hell on earth. While conditions here are no worse than Newgate, they are no better. I'd imagine it would be so, but imagining a thing and actually experiencing it are very different. I started to think of the countless souls imprisoned here over the centuries. There are people from all walks of life here, from members of the pale removed from con contention for an inheritance to simple barbers locked away to prevent them from repeating what they innocently heard while performing their jobs. Locked away, tortured, and killed. My research into the prison's records show that only a few select, a few select few of those sent here were ever convicted of a crime. This is not the simple prison it claims to be. It is rather simply a dungeon where those in power steal away those without, who stood in their way. How ironic that this place, built as a house of gods, should become a house of horrors, forsaken by him. June 3rd, 1716. I've discovered something nearly impossible to believe because I do not wish to. According to the prison records from the 1632 to the year last, over 80 or 8,200 people have met their mark maker within these walls. And these are only those for whom are re there are records. How many more hapless souls have died locked away here with no one even caring? June 4th, 1916. Or 1716 19. Today I was ordered by the warden to watch over the prisoners in the West Wing. I know this is my first assignment since arriving. I do not look forward to it. This is different from punishing some simple beggars. What sort of man could take pleasure in being women and children? Received a letter from the mum in Sir Southampton today. She complains that I wasn't able to attend my sister's wedding. Apparently she married a Gibbons boy, one of the wealthier landowning families in the area. I'm sure she'll be happy. She's been brought up well and should have no problem fitting into even a gen or gentry family. It seems just like yesterday she was a baby, following me around clutching her favorite little doll. I'm fiercely proud of her though, even though I worry she may have been pampered a bit too much. I wish her the best of luck as she now starts her own family. June 5th, 1716. We began the questioning of Prisoner 27 today. The warden tells us he was instructed to do so by one of the nobles, currently in favor with the crown. He looks to have been a man of good learning and some standing. He broke down and cried like a baby after the iron was pressed into his chest, knowing he will never be released, we need not take care to leave him whole. I am used to using water or a rack, something that would not leave a mark for such things, but here there is no purpose, no desire to convert a heathen or 
bring about repentance. Here, the punishment is only meant to cause as much pain as possible until death. A job is a job, and while I have no intention of taking it up with the ward, and I still have reservations about what we do here, after all, we are still nominally employees of the Crown. Getting paid to inflict pain on others, are we no different than the common ruffians? July 6, 1716. Torturing people has become a daily routine, and there is no shortage of tools here. Whips, chains, iron maidens, Spanish boots, cages, spiders, even some I had never seen or heard of before coming here. I must admit I am impressed at the ingenuity of, human, of the human mind and the ways that it can create such myriad ways to inflict pain upon another living being, but which is worse, those who think of such devices are those who use them. All those we torture beg us to kill them, but we instead keep them alive that they may suffer more. There is no rest for them. Not now, not ever. August 14, 1716. Received a letter from Mum today. She says my brother is wanting to go to some fancy school in the East and needs money. Why he would want to go to such a place is beyond me. Imagine a university graduating her own family. I wonder what Pa would think. I know she gets some money from my sister's family, but I'm sure she doesn't want to always be asking for handouts from her daughter. I want to help. I want to do as much as I can for my family. August 31st, 1716. Aye, aye, aye. I guess this is there's actually very little this is only the second written file I found in the game. It's a lot longer than the first one. August thirty first, seventeen sixteen. The mad woman in solitary confinement has died. If there is such a thing as there's such as thing as fate, she must have been born under an unlucky star. She was a merchant's daughter whose hand had been promised to the heir of a wealthy family, but he had a change of heart and abandoned her. He eventually married a noblesman's daughter and was adopted into the family which had no heir. She was brought here to keep her out of the public eye. She kept the wedding dress she never got to wear until the day she died. I wonder, who is more insane, her or us? September 26, 1716. A strange rumor is making its rounds amongst the prisoners. A number of people who say that they have seen a sign from God in the night sky is growing. None of the other guards believe there is such a thing, but such rumors are often a sign of trouble. I hope nothing happens. October 3, 1716. Torture, pain, and death. These fill the days of all who live here. I have come to envy those who quit living. Dear God, have mercy on my soul. I did not come here to become an executioner. I have pleaded with the warden to have pity at least on those suffering from illness, but he turned a deaf ear upon my pleas. In the end, there are only two things people care about. Power and money. They who have it, use it. They who do not, only suffer. October 13th, 1716. I feel as if I am losing my mind. I can no longer bear to hear the screams of those trapped here. Could I help them? I would, but since I cannot, I do not wish to share their confinement a moment longer. Were it my choice, I would quit this place at once, but my family looks to me for support. Also, I cannot let Lord Webster, who found me this job, down. I must repay his confidence in me. The other guards say that I will grow used to it soon enough, but I should not let myself be affected by trivialities. Trivialities! Can they not hear the screams? I understand now. They are as mad as any of the prisoners. That then is my fate. I, too, shall end up mad just like them. October 29th, 1716. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear to him, met him, or went into the house and learned his hand on the wall, and he leaned his hand on the wall, and the serpent bit him. That's obviously that statue stuff I picked up earlier. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness to it? Book of Almost, Chapter 5, November 1st, 1716. I rhyme this after having been awakened by gunshots in the middle of the night. There are screams of joy and anger throughout the building. We are being attacked by an armed band. Apparently the sign of God the prisoners had been discussing was actually a signal from people outside the prison plying to aid the in our incarnated friends. The three prisoners are going mad, killing the guards and other staff. Their positions reversed, they flee for their lives, but are hunted down, beaten, killed, even burned alive. I find a strange satisfaction in watching them. They who were so drunk on power and wealth dying like insects at the hands of those they thought they were masters of. The mob is sure to make its way here in time. This time, uh, the time of our, my, judgment is upon us. 
Do not grieve for me, dear sister. I will welcome them with open arms. As a fellow sufferer and sinner, even now I hear footsteps. They are just outside my door. They... End. That was for that, I guess. And an RPG battle after being so long. No, they might have been talking about the Mummy Bride that we fought before this. That's a uh, correlation. This guy is right next to where we fought the Mummy Bride. Oh, wait, I need to move in for the kill here. Doing our parts. Gotta strike it. to kill dogs, apparently. At least it's not the straight-up cat enemy that appears in that one section of the game that we just kill for no reason. But it does give us experience, I guess. The thing is, that didn't give me anything important. So, now what? I mean, don't get me wrong, that file was interesting. But no progress. So there's something in this room that's hard to spot. Check every bit of this room right now. Right now. Every bit. And get a good looking at everything. Oh, it's in the corner of the room that you couldn't see, okay. Looks like the painting press could be used. Do you want to set the stone tablet? Yes, I do. Star, okay, starting the printing press after inserting the stone tablet creates a strong vibration, causing the wall behind the press to collapse. The press prints the original map, a map of the old man or monastery, which was inscribed on the stone tablet. Cool. So you know, that, that was totally visible in this corner. And suddenly the wall's broken for no reason. That's fine. Alright. And RPG battle. Is it going to be a new enemy or something that we fought already several times over? Ah, it's a new enemy. It's like a bowl mixed with uh, venom? I don't fucking know. Let's just whack up and Run up and whack. I meant to say whack up and run. Run up and whack. That works out too. Him with the blunt force of 5,000 iron pipes. It's okay, I've grinded up for this moment. Oh dear, that was sure powerful, Mr. Bull. Oh, I'm now poisoned, but I don't give a fuck because I'm poking you over with a stick here. Feel the force of Something like that, but that won't work out too well. Megalith on you. Because I use Megalith the most, I'm gonna see if I get to level 2 Megalith spell, like there's no suggestions on the Ah, it's got a good amount of health, actually. Oh, but it's still dead. Poison doesn't last past a round, so yeah, potions obtained, though. Skim the wall for stuff that looks like bow and arrow stuff. More bow and arrow guns. That'll be useful whenever I find a boss that's less or more powerful than I. You are a disc. I'm sure that disc has some purpose. Alright, I can't carry any more items. That's what's going on. Well, uh, items? Weapons? Yes, fire knuckles are gonna go away. Found the disc. That's obtained. Is that a door? That's not a door. Well, let's get out from back here. Now where does a disc go? much. Not in here, I meant. I guess I can try the clock. Maybe. Maybe it needed a disc. I'm not sure that's what it needed. In fact, I don't think that's what it needed, but what do I know? 
I sure certainly didn't know there was a printing press in the corner of that room, that's for certain. Now let's try this. Can a disc insert into you? Nope, it cannot. Because I'd rather not explore everything for a fourth time, where the fuck does the disc go? Let me let me think of this over for a second before I think it or look it up. If there was a disc anywhere? I can't think of anywhere. Alright. Says we should find a disc. This is I guess counts at the same time, but still. We checked every room three times over. Where does this go? Use the relief piece. I don't know where the fuck the relief piece is. What where does the disc come into this? Because we just picked does he mention the disc? Or maybe use a disc like that. Disc, 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 disc. That's way later in the game. So it's obviously not what we need. He doesn't even bring up a disc. How does that work? Hmm. I got nothing. It says in the collapsed wall there will be a passage to the collapsed church. So I guess forward is the only way. What do I know? I mean, definitely not where these discs go, that's for certain. Will I finally be able to leave this facility I've been trapped in? Break me out of my prison wall. Alright, there should be something here. Are you a door? That was a door, I was going to interact with it before. Here we go, outside. Kind of. Still be in a locked cage, but you know that works. It's locked and won't open. Got the fresh air still. And another RPG battle. What do we have to fight this time? A harder version of the rat, dog, snake, human thing. It's not actually a snake. Ah, it's got higher agility than us. The first one did too, so maybe this one will actually be a challenge. Let's give it a shot. Strike it off. Yep, it's got higher defense and higher agility than the previous one. I should stand here and poke it for this in the meantime. Ah, that broke. Alright. Magic, try the megalith on it. Give it a fair shake. It's about to try and attack me. Delish. Let's put that back. Or agility up a little bit still. However, though, I do need to replace this weapon. Alright, equipment. Let's see what you want instead of just being barehanded. We'll start off with wire knuckles and work from there. A normal axe. Lower certain things, but better than other things. Seems like you'll be good with Mystic or with a normal axe for the moment. Let's break on through. Church left nave. Hey, in church, you know, that's cool. It's got a lot of purple. What are you on the floor? Ah, relief piece. Pick up the item. I even know where this goes. We'll be back, church. We'll be back. So of course, it's in the other building. So let's think about the three buildings that are literally right next to each other. We have a house. We have a prison, and we have a church. That's basically what it seems to be split up into right now. Out we go. I don't want too much advice. I'll figure it out as I go. I'm an upgrade your vitality anyway. I'll try and get our agility up and balancing the third style with vitality and all that. Up we go. I'll ask for advice when I need it. After you insert the relief piece, the relief begins to move. Give it a second, the cutscene's thinking. The music box suddenly starts playing by itself. 
ay, ay, ay. Play again, music box. Or do I just go to the music box and it plays itself automatically? I mean, I get the puzzle, but... Music box, there you are. Maybe I need to leave the room and come back in. This room's kind of probably locked. The door won't open, it looks like it's been designed to open using a sort of mechanism of some sort. Or I can just guess it. You step on the floor, fall in the melody. Oh, that was right. The music box has stopped playing and the pair is broken. You throw away the music box. And open the door. Yay for guesswork. Mm. What? What is that? Is that just a mummy? Cross your fingers. That was disappointing. Holy savior! The secret of the Fomors from the bottom of the sea. Emigre! Did you say immigrate document? What do you know about the immigrate document? Where is it? Answer me! Immigrate document? Is that what you've been looking for? Hey, you crotchety old fart! I am sick of this! You don't want to talk? Fine. I'll slit your holy throat and leave your body for the rats! Edward? I have no choice. Here it is. I'm on instructions direct from the Vatican. There is a manuscript. It's said to be somewhere in the building. And that manuscript is? Right. It's called the Immigrate Document. Is it very important? For hundreds of years, it was kept deep inside the Vatican Library. No one was allowed to read it. In fact, many people thought it didn't even exist. That's weird. So why is it here now? Somebody stole it. Stolen? From the Vatican? Right. No way. Not many people could steal a thing like that from the Vatican. You really have to know the place, or have enough money. According to our secret investigation, however, the wealthy gentleman who purchased this monastery bribed someone within the Vatican to steal the immigrate document for him. Wealthy gentleman? Yes. Patrick Hayworth. My friend. But it's not like it was priceless art or something. Why would he be interested in a thing like that? For years, Patrick has dabbled in mysticism and alchemy. He's on the brink of crossing the line, playing God. Playing God? Creating life, Edward. It's thought that the ancient druids' forbidden secrets on eternal life and resurrecting the dead are contained in the immigrate document. I can't believe that. Of course, it's just silly superstition. That's why I'm here to try to convince Patrick to drop his dangerous experiments and return the immigrate document to the Vatican. Wow. You'd never guess that a lunatic like that was living here by looking at the place. According to the caretakers, he lives in the building next to the temple. They said that? Yes, they're terrified. With all the crazy things going on around here now, they haven't even seen Patrick, yet they feel indebted to him. They've asked me here to see if I can save him. So that's your story? I don't know. One more mystery that needs unraveling. Oh my, what's this? Ah, green glass part. All the glass parts I'm picking up here. Anything this crazy old coo in the coffin wants to say? No? Okay. 
So alchemy, bringing back the dead. I don't know why bringing back the dead sounds so ludicrous to them when they've been fighting ghosts half the game. Um, anyways though, let's go check around. There's nothing else in here besides that glass shard. And story moment. So back out we go. One second, find the door. There it is. Yeah, so makes a melody. That's amazing. All right, now we go back to the church, as I think we might have the glass shards on top of the fact that I can't go back and do anything else yet. There's a few things that we need to come back to this building for, but for the moment, let's go churching. Huh. I'm kind of thinking to myself, could we almost be done? I guess it kind of depends how, I mean, done with this disc. Not done with the game, we still have two more discs left. We're still on disc two, so yeah. It's a crow and it looks to be like a zombie thing. We can take it. Fucking birds. I can already tell them to hate these enemies. I'm over here, I'm gonna whack you with a pipe. Action. Use Megalith on the zombie like thing. I guess you're gonna come in and try and hit this bird as well to get out of the picture. Ah, 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 that one too. That was enough to take out the zombie when hit. Delta's magic is definitely powerful. Wait there as we continue to try to take care of our bird problem of all things. Just a lower pitched bird yell for the fucking crow death sound. Seems it's all come around full circle. Alright. Increasing everything that you get increased in. Ah, you didn't know that level up. I still don't know what make you better in. I guess we'll make you better our pie, because I guess we'll make you the stats man in the back. Put that one up. And mind, why not? Can never not use more Pankia. Now what secrets may the church hold? I'm gonna try this way first. Church left nave, stained glass room. I wonder if this is where I use the stained glass. Probably not. Let's make sure there's like nothing else in here. Alright, I'll look at your puzzle now. Can I finally get rid of all this glass I've picked up? There are pieces missing from the stained glass mirror mural. You used the red glass part. You used the blue glass part. You used the orc or I guess orc or glass part. Use the green glass part and use the brown glass part. Not only is that five items that I don't need out of my inventory, we can now continue here. After the last piece of the glass is inserted, the door to the next room unlocks. There are Greek layers around each of the five pieces of glass. Ah, oh dear. I'm backtracking just a little bit more. They must be the key to the lock that had Greek layers on it. There are Greek layers around each of the five pieces of glasses. All right, I'll write them down. We have an E, looks like a B, seems like a C, S, P. All right, so that should be able to work out fine for myself. They must be the key. I know they're the key to the thing that we were looking at before. I'll go and do that first before I continue further into the church because it's good to get that stuff out of the way earlier on. Not to mention it's just like right over here. It's barely even any distance from where we are. On the bright side, we're getting more of the puzzles back here done, so that might mean less backtracking from here in the church. And maybe we can more permanently get away from this building. At least that's my hope. The only thing which I can think of that I still need to go back for is the green key with a doll next to it. But first, an RPG battle against thing. It's something that we're probably already pretty good against. Yep, one of these fellers. 
He's got high agility, though. Oh, I guess I finally have faster agility than him. It's a bit of a surprise. Wait. Seriously, these guys have fast agility. I'm surprised he got the first hit on the air. Magic. Let's use a megalith here. You move back a bit, too. And for no reason, just wait. In case this doesn't work, though, it will work. Ship with an axe. That's kind of amusing in its own sense. Let's open this up and take care of this magical poem. It's locked. I bet we don't even need to solve the puzzle too much. You align the Greek lyrics to match what you saw in the stained glass. Oh, didn't even have to write it up. It Apparently I thought, ah, fuck that puzzle. After you match up the five Greek layers, the lock opens. We found a sheave of letters in a red box. The box has happy birthday written on it and holds a, cor a corset of dried flowers that crumble when you touch them. The letters are all signed Sophia Deloito. I will pick up the item. You got Sophia's letter. It's for mainly story purposes, I guess. Read Sophia's letter. Sophia's letter. Letter number one. My dearest daughter, Charlotte. As I sit in silence, struggling to write this letter to you in English, I sense the arrival of winter is near in Arden Castle. I feel it makes me a bad mother, since I am unable to make you happy. I cannot lament enough how my selfish affair has entangled so many people, including you, my dear, who were sent to Wales to encounter many sorrowful experiences. I probably will never see you again, nor your brother, nor your sister again. But one thing that will not change is that you are my beloved daughter. You are the daughter of the man whom I love from the bottom of my heart, Philip Christopher. I am sure that you must resemble him greatly. You were blessed when you were born, and that you are still alive is a testament to the fact. I often wonder what the color of your eyes is, and how it would feel to run my hands through your hair. I bet that's the girl that died when she was a baby without a name. I cannot help but dream about the day I meet you, although deep down inside I know that day will never come. We might be far away in distance, but we are always together in my heart. Please take good care of yourself. Your mother, Sophia Delota. Letter number two. My dearest Dara Charlotte, five summers have already passed since you entered the world. I think I must have written over 20 letters now. Despite my poor pensmanship, how happy it makes me to know that my feelings are being conveyed to you. I wonder what I should tell you today. I think I will talk about your father. Your father, Philip Christopher, is the son of Count von Honismark, I guess. Sweden's artillery inspector general. Your father was a uh, your father was a childhood friend of mine, and I am the daughter of a duke. Unfortunately, Philip and I eventually had to part due to the inevitable circumstances of our country. An arrangement was made so that I was to marry and be queen to Count Hanover, and spend days filled with hardship. It was your father who came into my life again and saved me. Your father and I spent many years loving each other. It's a fact that I fell in love with somebody, although I was already married. Some would call that a secretive affair, but our love was genuine and pure, especially when compared with the marriage arrangement with Count Hanover, or Hanover which was strain, which was stained with politics and power. Please forgive your foolish mother. Your mother, Sophia de Lota. Letter number three. My dearest daughter Charlotte, please allow me to celebrate your 12th birthday with you. May God bless the grace be with you. Or, and bless. What would you like for your birthday? Would you like a raspberry cake? I should like to get you a beautiful dress, along with a golden hair ornament and brooch. Or brooch. I want to braid happiness into each loop of your hair. Then you could dance in the court like a precious jewel. My dear Charlotte, are you well? I hope you haven't become sick. I only wish to make you happy, even if I have to sacrifice my own life. Is that a wish that cannot be granted? I would like very much to get to know you, even if it's only a glance. I want to see how you've grown up. There isn't a day that goes by that I do not pray for your well-being. I try not to lamb it, but I love you from the bottom of my heart. Your mother, Sophia Delota. That's actually only the third diary entry in the game. So there's been more recently, I'll be honest. There's like no diary entries at all in the first two and a half hours. Then we got one that was really short. It was like a page long. 
Then we got the, the last one, which was super long, and then we just got this one. So that's three so far, and I guess we're about... At this point, we're about six hours, over six hours in the game, so yeah. Now then, back to church. Gotta poke about. I just like files and games. It's all that are interesting, which I guess those were to me. I found that even though like the guard's diary was super long, I found it interesting enough, so I was intrigued by it. To the next. Church nay first floor. Alright, here we go. Big church hallway and immediately an enemy fight. What might we fight possibly in a church? Enemies that we've all seen before, but never in this combination. I'm gonna take care of the. I guess. Alright, I'll take care of this guy first. My goal is gonna start off with this fella. Ah, double hit. That's very rare. Now, you're gonna use your magic of a megalith on the eye. I guess that leaves you to run up and try and not do anything. That's cool, you can do that too. I won't waste a turn, I'll use magic on this guy. Suddenly he moves over here. Try and cast his own spell. Hit what? Hit both of them. That's new. Not bad, just I've never seen that done before. A spell hitting more than one enemy at once. Alright, put this through that. And there we go. You get an upgrade as well. So that, you, what do I agree with you? You, I guess, you some more. That's not a bad thing to upgrade. I'll make your dexterity go up by two. Mm -hmm. We also got Rosario and the Lawn Sword. Got it. 